Most websites are a complete headache to scrape with IP bans, CAPTCHAs, and Cloudflare always getting in your way. But what if I told you that there's a really easy way to bypass all of that security? In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to scrape any website using n 8 n and Zenros. So let's go ahead and jump right in. A few of you guys might be asking, why are we using Zenros? Zenros is a really good proxy rotating service that changes your IP address every single time that you request a website. It's responsible for bypassing all that security like Cloudflare and CAPTCHAs. It has the ability to scrape JavaScript rendered websites and it's really easy to use, which is why we use it for all of our clients. And across all our clients, we're scraping over 100,000 pages a day, so we know it works. So let's jump straight into the workflow. Here's the workflow that we're going to be building today. Basically, we have a small lead list from Google Sheets. We're going to scrape each of the websites in the lead list. Then we're going to grab the website info. We're going to summarize it. We're gonna extract any emails and phone numbers we might find, and then we're gonna push it back to the Google Sheets. Starting out, here is our lead list. We have a list of eight different contacts with eight different websites, and we're going to scrape the websites to get some website summaries that we can use for some automated outreach or for research or whatever purposes you really want. I just did this as an example. If you guys are paying for the N8N cloud version, then you can skip this step. Your process is going to be a little easier. You can just click the sign in with Google button and you're good to go. So starting off, we need to connect our Google Sheets. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Go to console.cloud.google.com. I will leave a link in the description down below. Then we're gonna go ahead and type in Google Sheets. We're gonna click on the Google Sheets API. Here it's gonna say enable. For me, it says manage. Beautiful. Then we're going to go down to the OAuth consent screen. We're going to click create a new OAuth consent screen. Mine says edit app. Give it a name. Give it an email. You can add a logo if you want. You're going to want to give an authorized domain. Now this domain needs to be the same as wherever your N8N is hosted. And then you have to give it an email for contact. Click save and continue. You have to add some scopes here. Click add or remove scopes. You want to make sure it's a 100 rows per page, select them all and click update, and then click save and continue. And then there should be a confirm button down here. Next, we're going to go over to credentials. We're going to create a credential, an OAuth credential, a web application, give it a name. Here we need to jump into N8N. So we can go over to Google Sheets here. We can click to add a new one. We're gonna grab the redirect URL right here, go back. And right here, we're going to add it just like that. And we're going to click create. Then it's going to give you some information here. Client ID, client secret. Copy both of those and put those back in here. And now click sign in with Google. This window will pop up. Make sure you pick the same email that you use to create the API, which will also be the same email that has the Google Sheet. Click here, click allow, and you're good to go. Awesome. Now that that's connected, we can go back and we can add a document of YouTube scrape. This is this list right here, right? And then just make sure that we're on the right sheet. There's only one sheet here. And that's it, we can click test step, which I already did, and it'll come out with the data of the Excel sheet right here, beautiful. Next, we need to go to app.zenros.com forward slash builder, link in the description below. And we need to grab this API key right here. Once you have that copied, go ahead and do a loop over items right here. And then the next one, we're gonna add an HTTP node with a method of git. Here's going to be our URL. And then down below, we're gonna send query parameters. One is gonna be called API key and you're gonna paste your API key right there. Then below that, we're going to add another query parameter called URL, and here's where we're going to grab the website, which is right here. You can just drag and drop it, and that's the link that we're going to scrape from the Excel sheet. Then we're gonna put JS render is true to make sure that we always grab JavaScript rendered website. We're going to use premium proxy is true, and we're gonna put the country as the United States, you can put whatever country you want. And then for the response type here, I'm putting plain text. 
Now, if you want it to retrieve HTML, pure HTML with no changes, you can just delete this here. For me, I just want to grab the text of the website. I'm just looking to see if there's any emails in there and to summarize what the company does. Other than that, we are good to go. So if we test this, you can see it does grab the text off the website that we're scraping. Next, I put a quick filter here, add this into it. One last thing about this, sometimes the scrape doesn't always go as planned. You don't get charged for extra scrapes if they error, which is great, but we always wanna make sure that we fix those errors. So I put retry on fail for three with a wait time of five seconds. And then if it continues on error, use the error output. And then I took that error output and I looped it back to loop over items. So if it can't scrape a website, maybe the company's website's down or something's wrong, it'll just skip to the next item on the list and it will not stop the workflow. But at least it will try three times before that happens. Now here we have an if node. Basically what we're checking to see is if the data json.data, which you can drag just like that, exists. This is to make sure that the website has text on it. Some websites, they don't have text at all. They just have images and crazy stuff. So sometimes Zenrose has no text to grab. If you find scraping to be a little bit complicated and you just want a little bit of help, I'm hosting a free WhatsApp community for anybody who wants to learn. So be sure to check out the link down below. Next here, we're going to add an AI agent, and this one is a tools agent, and I define the prompt below. This prompt is pretty simple. Your job is to summarize this website into two or three sentences. If the company does multiple things, then only give a summary of the most important main thing of the company. You're also going to extract any emails and phone numbers that you find on the website. Your response output will be as follows. And then I said, I'll put your website as a string, emails as a list, and phone numbers as a list. And then I added json.data, which I just grabbed from here, the if node. Then scroll down, you're gonna wanna require specific output format as true. And here I added this to the structured output parser. We have summary, which is a string, emails, which is a list of strings, and phone numbers, which is a list of strings. And then in terms of the AI, you can add whatever one you want. I'm using ChatGPT here because it's pretty easy. I'll show you guys how to connect ChatGPT really quickly. So go ahead and go to platform.openai.com forward slash API dash keys, link down below. Click create a new secret key, give it a name, create the key, copy the key, go back to N8N, paste it in here, and you're good to go. And for this one, I am using the GPT-4 model. That one works just fine. You can use the GPT-0. You could use the GPT-3.5 125K. That one also works really well. Or you can maybe use Cloud A or something else. So when you run this, it'll get this response here. Now, this website didn't have any emails or phone numbers, which kind of sucks, but that's okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to update it in Google Sheets. So we choose the account we connected earlier. We put update row in the same sheet. We map each column manually. I'm matching on the company name, which if you go back to loop over items is right here. So I just drag and drop that there. And then we don't need any of this information. We want the additional emails. So that's coming out of the grab website info right here. Just grab those emails, drop it like that. Grab the phone numbers here, drop it like that. And then the website summaries here, you drag and drop like that. And then I'm also including the website text, which comes from the Zenro Scrape 1 right here. Just grab this data, pop it in there, and you're good to go. And then if we test this step really quick, and it looks like it works pretty well. So if we go back to the Excel sheet, now we can see that it's really big and we have the website text and the website summary right here. But we don't have any other information because there is no information to grab. Now this is pretty cool, but we can level it up even more with a couple of tweaks. So I want to give you guys a couple of thought exercises here before we close out of ways that this could be a lot better. First of all, if we hop over to Zenrose, we have a lot of cool options here. Zenrose can actually grab images, links, emails, and phone numbers. It does an okay job. Sometimes it misses some, but that's all right. You can also parse plain text. You also can select different options here, take screenshots of the website, or export the website in Markdown, which is cool. And if you want this to reflect in Zenrose, all you have to do is add a new parameter with this as the name and this is the value in your HTTP node. So what does that mean? I'll show you. If you go over to the Zenrose scrape, go down to query parameters right here. Just click add a new parameter. And then let's go back. Let's say if we want outputs, emails, and phone numbers, copy outputs, 
put that up there and then we go back and we copy this right here emails and phone numbers and we paste that in right here and it's good to go another cool thing you can do with Zenros is you can put your own custom headers so if you need to log into a website you can log in via your browser grab the cookies from the header post them in there and use that to get past logins now this is more advanced maybe I'll show a tutorial of that in the future but it's really cool another thing you can do is you can dynamically control the website clicking on buttons entering text into different fields using these JSON commands here and if you look here it gives you the instructions just like this that you can copy paste to put in your HTTP node. Now this is really useful if you're scraping a lot of products off of a WordPress website or Amazon for example. The final way we could upgrade this workflow is by grabbing all of the links from the main page and then asking GPT, hey, which of these sub pages is most likely to have phone numbers or emails? GPT will say, hey, I think that these pages will have phone numbers and emails and then you can scrape those pages and try to grab the phone numbers and emails out of those. I hope that you guys scrape websites all across the internet and if you guys ever need any help I am hosting a free WhatsApp community where we're there to help each other and learn together. So please check out that link down below and I'll see you guys next time.